Chairman Rand, please present our speaker, the Honorable Rashern L. Baker III, County Executive, Prince George's County, Maryland. Mr. President, I have the high honor to present the Honorable Rasheen L. Baker III to receive in your hand the Doctor of Laws. Would you please come forward? Rashern L. Baker III, dedicated public servant, esteemed barrister, astute political strategist, and consensus builder, you are the seventh county executive and third African American to serve the citizens of Prince George's County, Maryland, the state's second largest jurisdiction by population, and the wealthiest majority African American county in all America. Your commitment to improving the human condition and your honest leadership are hallmarks of an active career of public service in the Prince George's community for over two decades. Your administration has led efforts to increase employment for residents and also has championed economic development, education, public safety, and issues related to the environment, transportation, and sustainability. A native of Valdosta, Georgia, you grew up in a military family with experiences around the world in Okinawa, Japan, North Carolina, and Beverly, Massachusetts, where you graduated from high school. You earned an undergraduate degree at alma mater and a Juris Doctorate degree at HU School of Law. A conversation with your father about personal responsibility and public service motivated your interest in politics. A crucial desire for positive change in your county led to your candidacy for successful representation of District 22B in the Maryland House of Delegates from 1994 until 2003. Rashern L. Baker, beloved son of Howard, man of great purpose, passion, and commitment to community and public service. Your awe-inspiring career and devotion to servant leadership are the paramount benefit to the residents of Prince George's County, Maryland, and to this nation. Indeed, you are an exemplar of Martin Luther King Jr.'s quote, all labor that uplifts humanity has dignity and importance and should be undertaken with painstaking excellence." End quote. You epitomize the cherished core values of the capstone, leadership, excellence, truth, and service. It is with great pride and respect that we honor you on the historic 146th opening convocation as speaker and confer upon you the degree Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 I hope you have comfortable seats. <laughs> when from the, you got, you got me? I know you always want to look good. That's right, we get a picture of this. <laughs> when from thee we've gone away, may we strive for thee each day. As we sail life's rugged seas, O Howard, we sing of thee. That is probably my favorite stanza to the alma mater. It describes how I feel about Howard University, the place that equipped me with the knowledge the self-awareness, the sense of pride in myself and my heritage, the place that taught me how to handle life's rugged seas, a place like no other, a place that is beloved and admired by so many. President Rabot, 
First Lady, Dr. Paula Rabot, Chairman A. Barry Rand, Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, honored guests, my good friend, the first African-American County Executive of Prince George's County, Wayne Keith Curry. And most important of all, the students of Howard University. It is my privilege to bring you greetings on nearly the 900,000 residents of the greatest county in the United States of America. A county that consists of 500 square miles, a diverse population, and as was mentioned earlier, the wealthiest majority African-American county in the United States and I dare say the world. Dr. Rabot, we are home to Howard University's research campus, FedEx Field, the University of Maryland, Bowie State University, Six Flags, and yes, Air Force One. <laughs> Today I am overcome with emotion. I have to tell you, I, as I was sitting here, I couldn't imagine that I'd ever be standing up here giving this address, and I'm sure some of my classmates couldn't imagine it either. <laughs> and then you think about the list of impressive speakers you've had before me, like Governor Wilder, Governor Duval Patrick, I like that governor sound, <laughs> John Lewis, Alexis Herman, and yes, President Barack Obama. I'm honored to follow in their footsteps. If you will indulge me, I'd like to acknowledge my mom, who is here, Carolyn Baker. And my father, who is no longer with us. He would be proud, and maybe a little surprised, to see his second son here. I couldn't help but remember the day that I got my acceptance letter to Howard University. I ran and showed it to my dad. He looked at it and he read it. Then he walked over to the phone and he called the admissions office to make sure they had not made a mistake. <laughs> What's even funnier is I was glad he called because I wasn't sure they had made a mistake either. All these years, you know, I want to find that person in admissions office and say, what were you thinking? <laughs> I'm sure he would be very proud. And yes, artist, he might have called you and confirmed that I am the speaker today. <laughs> he would be proud because my father, an enlisted man who served two tours in Vietnam, knew about the greatness of this university. He was aware of the incredible people that attended and taught at Howard University. It was my dad who talked to me about Howard University and the role that it plays. As was mentioned, it is also my dad who inspired me to go into public service. So thank you, Mommy. The First Lady of Prince George's County and my wife, Crystal Lynn Beverly. Dr. Rabot, um, my wife often reminded me that she only applied to one college, Howard University, and she only wanted to pledge one sorority. She loves this place. And I remind people that it is my mother who raised me, it is my father who inspired me, but it is my wife who made me county executive and the person that I am today.
My family is a central part of my life. They are my support and they are my comfort. And I couldn't do this job without their love and support. I would also like to thank the people of Prince George's County because I stand here today as a two-time graduate of Howard University, but also because I am county executive of the largest, second largest county in the state of Maryland, Prince George's County. And I am humbled by the trust and faith that the people of Prince George's County have placed in me. And I try not to forget that trust that they've placed in me each and every day, and I'm honored to serve them. Like my family and the county that I serve, this university has been a blessing in my life. The people that I met here, the instructors that I learned from, the experiences that I gained, prepared me to take on the world's challenges. My classmates, many of who are sitting right here in the front row, can we give them a round of applause? They came to make sure I actually got this. are lifelong friends, and many of them are the godparents to my children. <laughs> but when you think about it, when you think about it, that is what makes Howard such a unique place. As I said, as I was preparing my remarks, I couldn't help but reflect upon the long journey and the amazing journey on how I reached this stage today from my wife to the numerous people that I've met and the people that work in my administration. Howard University is heavily woven into the fabric of my life. It is a quilt that protects and comforts me. My friends from student government, my fraternity bro brothers, and yes, I'm an Omega, the ladies of Delta Sigma Theta, former professors, college friends are all pieces of that quilt. And it is a quilt of friendship and experience that have absolutely changed my life. And frankly, I can't imagine my life without Howard University. I met my wife on the very first day that I was at Howard University in Sutton Plaza as I walked through the door. <laughs> Talk about couldn't live your life without Howard. <laughs> it is also why convocation is so important and special to me. It is an opportunity for me to reconnect with the Howard community, to retool and to re-energize. You see, I was one of those students like many of you here today, and so was James Coleman that we actually came to convocation, even on the sunny days when people were out in the yard or maybe at the punch out. <laughs> they might be at the punch out. <laughs> maybe we went to the punch out afterwards. <laughs> convocation sign <laughs> Convocation is always signaled a new beginning. It is our ceremonial reminder of just how special this university is. But should also be our calling card that reminds us to rededicate ourselves to alma mater. For Howard is and will be the vanguard for change, the vanguard for leadership, the vanguard for progressive thinking and social justice. It should remind us of the rich history and legacy of this university. And it also should remind us of our responsibility to uphold and to protect the heritage with all of our might. We need convocations. We need this event to remind us of the greatness of this university. It helps us to renew our commitment to the university. 
A commitment that will endure despite what you may hear or you may read in the press. We must support the university financially, yes, financially, and with other resources. So many of us have the wherewithal to do more. But we seem to forget that Howard needs us, and needs us now more than ever. A friend of mine gave me this quote, and I think it's apropos. We must continue to water the tree of knowledge so that its branches grow, extend connecting people and cultures throughout the world. That is Howard. We must give back because Howard has given us so much. We must give back because every great university has a strong and supportive alumni. Every great university. So convocation is our moment to celebrate the Howard community. And today, we come together to celebrate 146 years of creating great leaders. People who attended and taught at this university. People who have, Dr. Rabot, what we like to call that Howard swagger. You know that swagger. Intelligence, confidence. You know, how many times have you been someplace and someone walked into the room and you looked at them or they started talking and you said, hmm, I bet she went to Howard. <laughs> That's the swagger I'm talking about. It is the swagger that the mayor of Atlanta has, Kasim Reed. It is the swagger that Attorney General of California, Kamala Harris has. It is the swagger of my good friend, Isaiah Leggett of Montgomery County. It is the swagger of the former mayor of the District of Columbia, Sharon Pratt. But it's not a swagger we got off the streets. It is a swagger that we inherited from leaders like Mordecai Wyatt Johnson, the first African-American president of Howard University who raised millions of dollars for this university, upgraded its buildings and its colleges and its schools. And during his time, Howard collected some of the greatest scholars the world had ever known. Elaine Locke, Ralph Bunch, Charles Drew, Ernest Everett Just, E. Franklin Frazier, Percy Julian, Sterling Brown. And Howard's enrollment during that time went from 2,000 to 10,000. During his 36 years as president, President Johnson laid the foundation for the modern Howard that we inherit today. He stood as an example of what Howard stands for, and that is excellence. It is Howard excellence that continues to attract the best and the brightest to come here and to study and to learn. For me, when it was time for me to go to college, I didn't really know where I was going to go. I hadn't paid much attention to college. I actually thought I was going to the University of Hawaii because it was a beautiful place and the weather was nice. <laughs> My dad made me apply to the University of Massachusetts because he worked there and I could go for free. <laughs> But honestly, Howard wasn't on my radar screen. It was my best friend, David Bird, who was applying to Howard, and he gave me a brochure and said I should check it out. And I did, and I had great information, distinguished alumni, wonderful academic programs, extracurricular activities, very impressive. But that's not what made me apply. There was a very attractive young lady on the brochure. So being 18, I thought if I'm going to college, that's where I want to be surrounded. <laughs> I 
But once I arrived at Howard University, I realized that it's far more than a place with a beautiful woman on the brochure. I instantly could see that I was surrounded by some of the brightest students in America. Students from all over the country and all over the world. Students from families who were celebrating the first in their, first in their family to go to college and students who were Howard legacies. Students who needed financial aid, me, and students who didn't, my wife. <laughs> Howard exposed me to something I had never seen before. A collection of young African-American students who came to school believing they could change the world. It was liberating. It was life-changing. It was and it is the Howard experience. We were fortunate to have great professors like Mary Frances Berry, Frank Snowden, Alvin Thornton, Oliver Taylor, who shared their wisdom with us. But for me personally, when I met and heard giants like Chancellor Williams and Rayford Logan and Michael Winston, I immediately switched my major from political science to history. <laughs> and it inspired me to do, to know that I could do the things that I wanted to do. All here at Howard University. It was here that I found people who thought like me, who had aspirations like me, who wanted to make a difference and change the world like me. Howard challenged us and we challenged each other. Those challenges made us look at the world and the world problems differently because we at Howard marched to a different beat. And that different beat guides me and my administration as we serve the people of Prince George's County. I often say this, and artists and I go back and forth on it, and I think she agrees with me, that, Howard, that Prince George's County has the highest number of Howard graduates per capita than any place outside of this university. Prince George's County. I also go back and forth with my good friend Wayne Curry and say Howard University made Prince George's County. He did. <laughs> so when I became county executive, I figured it wouldn't be hard to find some really talented people. My chief administrative officer of the county two deputy chiefs administrative officers, the communication director, the director of the health department, director of minority business, the director and deputy director of finance, the executive director of, of ethics and accountability, and members of my governmental uh, affairs team are all from Howard University. If the president can pull from Ivy League, we can pull from Howard. <laughs> I knew they were prepared for the challenges that we face in Prince George's County. And if any of you know the problems we face in Prince George's County, you know why I came to Howard. But together, the team and I have transformed policies and programs that are moving Prince George's County forward. In less than four years, we have made significant progress on public safety, health education, health and education, economic development, and we've reduced crime in Prince George's County to a 30-year low. We created a $50 million economic development incentive fund to attract businesses. We have over $4 billion worth of construction that's going to be going on in the county, including a high-end destination casino resort and a state-of-the-art regional medical center. But the things that I'm proud of most are our Transforming Neighborhoods Initiative, where we took six underserved communities in Prince George's County and we focused the government resources on them like a laser beam. And this past year, we significantly overhauled our education system so we could make sure that every child in Prince George's County gets a quality education. In Prince George's County, we are making now matter. 
And so I challenged Howard University, alumni, students, faculty, staff to adopt this attitude. We cannot rest on the laurels or stand on the foundation of the hard work and achievements of those who came before us. We must roll up our sleeves and get involved. Howard has been and will continue to be a beacon of light that sets the example, does not follow, sets the example that the nation and the world follows. Today, we must re recommit and renew our commitment to Howard University. We must stand united. We must stand strong. Thank you, and God bless Howard University.